would start at six. You get the six second lead in. That's a lot. Look at my lighting. I've been envious of your lighting, so I've been doing some stuff behind the scenes. Yeah. I've lit up like it's Walgreens. <laughs> like it's the ward. Did you have a lighting expert come in? A Myself, luminary expert. I what do they call Production assistant? <laughs> sure. Gaffer? Yeah. Should have. You got my boss green on, luck of the Irish. Yeah, let's get going. It's seven in the morning. You got your Boston your first first game of the uh, finals. Anoche tonight? No, no, no. Today's Tuesday, as far as I know. First game of the finals is Wednesday, June sixth. And for you out there listening to the show, welcome to Big Ben and K Win on NoFilter.net, YouTube, and Caffeine TV. If you're more of a podcast person, don't worry. Download, listen, and subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. I'm K Win. He's Big Ben, and he is a little worried about Christoph Persingis and the Celtics and if they can win another title. Are they going for 18? Uh, yeah, 18. I, I love even numbers. I don't know about you. Like, you know, the volume on your stereo. I, I can't be on nine. I can't be on seven. It's got to be eight or 10 or two or four. 18 championships. Now, the makeup of this team is a little different than previous championships, I think. Yeah. That's not to be said that the Celtics probably, I mean, is it a must-win series for the Celtics? Is the window, the proverbial championship window, shrinking on the Celtics? Yes and yes. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, this is their second time in the finals together. I believe they've been in the Eastern Conference Finals five times. The cast around them has changed a little bit, but they are still here. They've been the best team all year. They've been the favorite, like record-breaking, plus, minus, rankings, net rankings, three-pointers, all the pressures on them. Dallas is playing house money, with house money. Nothing to lose for the Mavericks. Nothing to lose. What so my think? first question to you, Big Ben, Jason Tatum. Is he disrespected or is he underappreciated? I think it depends on who you ask, to be honest. Uh, Jason Tatum spent only one year at Duke. And here's the thing about Duke players. I I don't know if they get this. Let's see if this. I interpret Duke players as kind of soft, like a little privilege. Privilege might be too far, but you're coming into an environment with really good players around you. One of the best coaches in the game, bar none. And Tatum only spent one year there, you know, lot, second round loss to South Carolina. So his, his legacy is not that great at Duke. Comes in, drafted number three. I think with any other franchise, I don't think Tatum's game really fits like the Boston persona, the Boston persona. You know, he's not gritty. He's not gutty. He's not, he's clean. And I think that hurts him a little bit in the perception, the grand scheme of things. Look at how much money they gave Jalen Brown. 300 Brown, million. 300 million. The kids, from, I mean, that's how you have to, everything's relative, right? I think Boston looked at Jalen Brown, even though he's drafted number three, they think they're getting a better return, right? Because he went to Cal kind of unheralded, but Jalen Brown fits that Celtics mold a little more. If Tatum was playing for Miami or if he was playing for Golden State, I think there would be a better perception of him overall in terms of his game and output. But when you're playing alongside the highest paid player <laughs> in the NBA, and Jalen Brown is good. Yeah. I think Tatum's a little, I think he's a little underappreciated, but overvalued. Okay. Like he's, he's not, he's underappreciated by his fan base, the fan base at large, but he's what he does for that team. I would love to see him on a team where he's one a and one B. Like if, if you put him on a golden state and put him in the, the, the Steph, you know, prior to kind of clay emerging and all this, how would he do, right? What does he look like in that environment? I think he's definitely underappreciated. He's the one A. It all starts with Tatum. He can do it all. He can score. He can pass. He can rebound. He can assist. I do agree with your take. I think it's the way he plays. You know, those athletes that are just so talented that it doesn't look like they're trying or exerting energy. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing because he's so gifted. He's more of a finesse player than a blue collar player. And that's why I think there is a miss 
between him and the perception out there. I will say this. The Celtics would not be in the finals or in this position without Jason Tatum. He is the best player on the team. The best player on the other team guards him. He gets double teams. He creates the offense and the firepower of the Celtics. Jalen Brown, on the other hand, Eastern Conference MVP. I'm not that sold on Jalen Brown. You take Tatum off the Celtics, they wouldn't be here. You take Jalen Brown off the Celtics, they would still be here. Jalen Brown definitely benefits because of Tatum. He is the Pippen to the Jordan. No, here, here's what. No, you're wrong there. Here's why. All the all these role players on the Celtics, Peyton Pritchard, uh, the litany of people coming off the bench, they do all the things that Jason Tatum doesn't want to do, nor can he do well. Let's defend, get on the floor, rebound, all these Tatum things. defends? Tatum's left to his own card. Tatum defends like James Harden defends. No, not no, that, no, no, no. Not, Look not that poorly. Minus. That's a little not bit the, of a stretch. Well, it's, your plus minus is going to be good when everyone else on the, on the floor is defending alongside of you. Like so he, if James Harden was on the Minnesota Timberwolves, he'd have a great defense. I'm saying if James Harden was on the Boston Celtics, his plus minus would be better. It's, yeah, it'd be hidden. Right. That's what I'm saying about Jason Tatum. I believe it's a little hidden okay. because we're, these players are matched up against Luca. Yeah, let's see. This will be a test. I mean, come on, if there's ever going to be a test. But also, I think about this, too. I think about Kyrie and Jason Tatum being both went to Duke. Both only one year at Duke. Both only one year. Right. And, and Duke, historically, before that, had always never really been a one and done. They were selective in their recruiting. They wanted guys to stay three to four years. So they're in the there's a lot of good storylines and narratives around this this series. Like I, I don't know. I want your take on this. You don't have to disclose who you believe is going to win the series. No, I will. Okay. I, I here's what I think. I think the Celtics are going to try to not figuratively beat up Luca and Kyrie. Okay. Like get through screens, come over the top, like bump, just do everything you can to just just leave impressions on them throughout the game. And I think I don't know if if the Mavs have any firepower beyond those two guys to do it. Like you had Minnesota, who was a pretty good defensive team, yeah. like you had Defensive Player of the Year. But I think collectively, Boston's a much better defensive team than the Wolves. Okay, so, so you're I, going Celtics here. I'm going Celtics in six. I think the Mavs just run out of gas. All right. Well, I'm going Mavs in six. Oh, there you God. have it. Well, give me the reason, though. Why Why does that? What's the storyline? What's the narrative? Celtics have run away with this league. They have a great offense. They have great power, firepower, great team defense. But they haven't seen the Mavericks, this version of the Mavericks. They saw them earlier in the year in January and March. But the Mavericks are playing better now than they ever have. The Mavericks have multiple components that can play D. But it all goes back to what you said a couple weeks ago. The Mavericks have two closers. I don't know if the Celtics have one. They have a great Ooh. team defense in clutch time. There's always a knock on Tatum, what he will do. Jalen Brown, let's hope he learns from the Warriors' finals appearance. But he was sloppy, turning the ball over. And I think the Mavs can close it out with either Luka or Kyrie. They're both going to score in the 20s because you can't stop them. And then with five seconds on the clock, if Kyrie has the ball, you're scared. If Jason Tatum has the ball... He's going to be shaking and dribbling. Everyone's going to stop. It's going to be a bad shot in the corner. The Celtics haven't been tested. The Mavs have been tested. And watch Jason Kidd's offense. He runs everything in the middle of the floor. So you can't double Luka or Kyrie because he's got shooters on the wing. I just think they're built to win this year. Forget the Boston Tea Party. It's the Kyrie Three Party. <laughs> okay. No, I guess you could come up up with that because what, what do they say tight butts don't play well and i think the celtics butts are going to be pretty tight going into yeah. this like they're expected to win the fan base knows they should win and if they don't win they may not be playing on the team based on fan vote next year like it's and then you have conversely on dallas their house money what do they say most dangerous person in the room this guy with nothing to lose yeah. they have nothing to lose but they have all, have all the motivation in the world to go say Listen, we took on the most, the best team from a plus minus record team and beat them. Like Mark Cuban's going to be there. I always think of this would be the most appropriate send off another title after what 
Dirk and them won one probably 15, maybe even 20 years ago. Yeah. It's going to be. But I go back to this. I think Boston is the better team. I think this is going to be a great series. But in my mind, you need that dominant alpha top one, two, or three in the league to win. Like, let's go back. Last year, who won? Nuggets, Jokic, best yeah. player in the league. The year before that, Steph Curry, top three player in the league. The year before that, Giannis, top three player in the league. LeBron at his peak. KD at his peak. Jordan at his peak. The only thing that goes against that take is like the Detroit Pistons when they won. So like, yeah, it's just they, the team like that Detroit Pistons team where the team is so great that you don't need that dominant top one, two, or three player in the league. Because let's be honest, Tatum is a very good player, probably a top 10 player, but he's not a top five player. He's not a top three. Is Luca a top five player? Luca's a top three player. Ooh. And that's why the Mavs are winning, baby. Okay. It's the best players, not the best team. That's your that's your take. That's my best players, not the best team. I got you. It's gonna be a good series, regardless. Series. And we'll it'll wrap up here. Wrap up in about three weeks, two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. In accordance with right around your birthday. So when you open know. up that Luca jersey <laughs> that I get you, you can wear it on game six. I love it. All right, where are we going? WNBA? Caitlin Clark, there's a lot of hate out there. Is it hate? Hate's a strong word. Jealousy? There you go. I think it's jealousy. Legitimately. I, With the foul that just took place, with the Fever's coach coming out and saying, just Caitlin's getting beat up. But go back, like, like my, I was talking to a coworker of mine. He's like, go back and look at what Candace Parker's uh, rookie video looks like. Mm-hmm. She got it worse. Like, just... <laughs> But there wasn't this inherent spotlight on her, you know, and the WA NBA is, wasn't where it is today. So Caitlin Clark just has a, the absolute utmost microscope on her. Every yeah. move, every game. I don't, is it, is it, if you're an other player, if you're another player, even Angel uh, Reese came out and said, like, People watch the NBA because of me too. Like this isn't the Caitlin Clark show, right? There's yeah. there's people that were going to games last year. She's just amplified and brought probably a lot, not a lot more, probably a lot more fans to the NBA just due to her visibility in the league. Yeah, I agree with your take. Like Candace Parker, Kelsey Plum, Sabrina Ionesky, they all went through it. There wasn't as many eyeballs on the league as there are now. So I think the WNBA, actually all professional sports, it's physical, it's chippy. And when you have a number one draft pick come in, you know what? You kind of want to punk them a little bit. You know, you try to test them a little bit. Now, I don't think uh, Clark from the sky should have given the shoulder, but it's not the end of the world. No, right? Like she didn't come in and sideswipe her on a layup. Right. And. I think it just comes with the territory of being the number one pick in the Caitlin Clark effect of the WNBA. They're just trying to test her a little bit. And these are growing pains with the WNBA, right? They don't, they haven't had to handle these type of issues before, right? Cause they haven't had all these, they haven't had the media covering them, them as much as they had in the past. They haven't had, you know, someone with Clayton Clark's or Clark's stature effectively, at least yeah. in terms of what she's done in the, you know, in the NCAA ranks and then coming into the NBA, there's, no one like her before. There's no precedent. And I think the NBA, WNBA is, you know, she's, you can't really protect her, right? If it's in the fluidity of the game, like stuff's going to happen, like you said. But how you respond to it, right? Are we giving Caitlin Clark a little more, like if, if this were to happen to a second round pick on the, you know, Dallas Stars or, not, excuse me, not Dallas Stars, on the Chicago Sky, does everyone, you know, no one's throw their arms about. up? Right, exactly. No one is talking about it. I think the players. So when does this, when does this kind of normalize? Right? When does it go from egregious, everyone's out to get Clayton Clark to no, that's just in the vein of the game, right? Regardless of who they are. You know what it reminds me of? Remember when Luca came into the NBA? He wasn't a number one pick, but there was so much hype around Luca and the Clippers. I remember it. They tried to punk him like Montrez Harrell, Marcus Morris, and like, how did Luca respond? He went right back at him. He hit game winners. He scored. And I think they're just trying to test Caitlin. And if she shows that she's not as scared, she puts up 
members, she'll be all right. The only thing I struggle with is I think her teammates got to protect her a little bit, right? Like, I'm a little older, so I go back to you have your Charles Oakley for your Michael Jordan. <laughs> you need some kind of bruiser to help out, right? To say like, hey, you pick on Caitlin, you pick on me, right? Yeah. If you do that down on this court and you drive on the other end of the court, you're going to get a very hard foul because she's with us. She's our girl. Well, the I think the Fever are having a tough time too because there is so many eyes on Clayton Clark, and they're what a two and ten team or two and eight team right yeah. now. Like the other players on that team, effectively are you know probably feel marginalized. You know, like uh, everyone wants Clayton Clark at the podium, and then everyone else is kind of you'll maybe get a tertiary question when everyone else leaves. I think Caitlin, to your point, I think you're you're right. It's all in how she responds to this adversity. You know, just the toughness of the league. Do you get back out? Do you dust yourself off, or do you, you know, go to your coach and have the coach put in some sort of protest around how you're being treated? Like, because you know, you could go one of two ways there, and I think that's going to be how the players in the league view you. Like, are you willing to get up and just keep going? And if you're going to go complain, well, the less likelihood that the players on your team are going to protect you, right? Like. The Indiana Fever are at a crossroads. Like, I'll do another comparison to baseball. Think about like the hitters that get hit, and then the pitchers don't hit the other opponents. Right? Then there's right. that like disconnect in the locker room. Like, why aren't you protecting me? So, like, right. at some point, they have to protect Caitlin and bring the team together and rally around this and turn that two and nine record into a record where they can make the playoffs because they're at the bottom of the league right now. They got to get to the eight seed. You know the WNBA commissioner wants you, Caitlin Clark in that playoffs. Or they can win the commissioner's cup, kind of like the Lakers did this year, and everything yeah. will be all right. Caitlin Clark, early impressions. Can you, I'll give you the same question I ask you asked me around Tatum. She is she uh, is she delivering on what you expected coming out of college? I think she's got great talent she's showcased it i think it's not an individual sport as sometimes college sports is i don't think she also has the supporting system around her i think if we fast forward two months from now we're gonna like not even be talking about any of this because she's gonna be doing her thing she's gonna be scoring and the team's gonna be doing better i think a lot of it is is she gets all the attention the team is not winning and there is jealousy yeah. so I think she's going through some ups and downs. She's had some great scoring games, but she's had some games where she hasn't shot the ball well or and turned it over. And it's a part of the rookie wall, I guess, or the next transition to the next level. She'll be fine, but she's been up and down, in my opinion. Yeah, she will be fine. And relative to other rookies, she's outperforming them. Right? It's, it is just a matter, but there's more of a... There's more of a... Um, yeah, microscope or expectation and around her. Like she's, you know, she has a 12 point game, five rebounds, six assists. And everyone's, you know, that's pretty feeble comparative to what she was doing in the, in the college ranks. Okay. We're going to close out with a little gambling discussion. Yeah. Or I can talk about the first time. Go ahead. Intern ran a little stat. First time these stars won an NBA title. Dwayne Wade was 24. Steph and LeBron were 27. KD was 28. Jordan was 10, 28. Kobe was 21. Luka is 25. Tatum is 26. Which one will win their first title? That's pretty exciting competition there. That is. You always want to be the first or the youngest, right? Yeah. Kobe, 21. He did have Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Kobe was good, but he did have Shaq, right? Let's precurse that all right let's uh, talk okay. okay gambling most recent news baseball outright ban of an infielder for the Padres I forget his name oh I didn't even see this this is hot off yeah. the press Out, hot off the press so apparently as when he was in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization when he was on the DL he was betting on Pittsburgh Pirate games Wante Porter of the Raptors recently got banned from the league for his participation in some betting. And here's the thing. He bet on his unders on his own props, which is ludicrous to me. I mean, that's just, you're just waiting to get found out there. 
And then, you know, we've seen some gambling within the NFL, players getting reinstated more recently. So gambling. So wait, has- let's just clarify. So each sport is saying, be careful when you bet on sports, but if you bet on the sport you're playing in, you're you're out of here. Well, yeah, you get treat people tracked. You, you, well, like you know, Tawny's place case, right? Maybe he didn't do it. He might have had a proxy, right? Like this, yeah. you know, just don't get caught. I believe is the the like do things appropriately, you know. And if we, just don't bet on your own team, don't bet on a game that you're playing in where you can do, do it through your buddy. Exactly. Like, oh, don't do it. Don't log on to DraftKings with your own name, birthday, and you know, like, don't do that. Just don't do that. Like, how? I mean, like, it just that that would not make sense to me. Like, I, I and I and figuratively, you know, this is so kind of nothing wants to. It's so underground that you could probably do a survey of players collectively anonymously. They say, yeah, I do bet, not on my own team, not on my own league, but I have someone do it for me. You know, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm either doing it at the, the bookie or whatever it may be. But the, I think the leagues are well, just Let's asking. talk about this a little bit because it's obviously not the superstars because they don't need the money and they don't want the risk and exposure. It is usually the role player or the fringe player who may not be there in Major League Baseball or in the NBA in another year. Do you think they have the competitive information that they think they can win millions of dollars? Well, this is the thing that, oh, okay, so you're right. So it's not the competitive information necessarily. What's becoming more controversial is that there's these prop bets now that do over-unders on specific stats, right? So outcomes of games, you know, those are so, there's so many variables in and around them that it's tough to influence that, right? Even if you're a player playing in the game in some case, unless you're the 19 or 1919 Chicago White Sox and you blow the entire World Series. Um, but I believe what they're saying, and especially in the college ranks or even the pro ranks now with Porter, for example, is there's coming out this with prop bets on an individual player. So if you have information about their injury status or, you know, injury status of other players, which means they get more, more minutes, like you can proverbially go out and make bets prior to that book, knowing that information and went out, right. Right. So it's the relay of that information. And that's really the biggest trouble that collegiate ranks are coming into with prop bets around individual players that can be largely influenced by them saying they're sick right how can the training staff bet (laughs) exactly (laughs) no that is that's the case right you can bet on nearly anything today absolutely anything but i do want to go back to your comment about you know the big stars not wanting to win it's betting gambling is more i think and here's what I'll tell you. I once witnessed how big was the, the pot. I once witnessed Eli Manning buy two thousand dollars worth of lotto tickets. He wanted to win. Yeah. He didn't need the money. He wanted to win. There's the dopamine. There's this thrill of winning. It's the competition. Right? It's the thrill of yeah. It's the thrill of competition. Not only that, but you believing. You know something that someone else doesn't, or your intuition tells you something. And when that hits, that's that's the feeling. And so I think it's you. I don't think you allow players bet, but gambling is so per- pervasive now. And you've seen ESPN, you know, come out with a gambler or a ESPN sports bet app, right? Now that's to me that's kind of conflict of interest, right? Like <laughs> we're running stories about not to bet, or you know. And then we're providing them the conduit to do it. Gambling is going to get out of control. It's so easy, right? Like it's on your phone. It's on an app. Every time you turn on the TV or you uh, go on the internet, there's always like free tokens on DraftKings. Like will Luca score more than 30 points? It's exactly. the prop bets that are the thing that I think that have blown up in recent years. Yeah. When, uh, I don't know. I think gambling as a whole, <laughs> you know, gambling used to be kind of something that degenerates did in a sense. It was like, frowned upon. It was, you know, you got guys that, you know, who would sit in this corner of an OTB and not, you know, smoke chain smoke cigarettes and watch the horses race, right? That was the guy you pictured on, on the gambler. Now it's anyone. That was the only place you could go to get the action. Right. 
now you can get the action in your phone and it's so easy. It is so pervasive. And I think athletes realize that too. You know, no one wants to be left out. Um, and gambling on your own team, I think that's that's where you kind of come on. Dicey. Dicey. But yeah, it, dude, and get a proxy. <laughs> get someone that, you know, give them 10% of your wins. I don't know. Yeah, just have your wife do it. Have your wife's sister do it. Right. <laughs> oh, uh, gambling. Do you gamble? I, so. Where do you draw the line? When I am in Vegas, I like to pet, bet on sports because I'm there. I like to sit in the sports book. And then also I play fantasy football, which I guess is a form of gambling. But I'm not an active, like, week, weekly gambler, gambler on sports. I'm more of like if I'm in a place like Atlantic City or Vegas, I will gamble. But when I'm out of it, I don't. I guess that's more my personality. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. Either in it or I'm out of it. We should we should really have, find someone that's all in on gambling and just understand the ecosystem. I've got two of them: Eric Burns, Joe. <laughs> they, they gamble on baseball, basketball, and football. Because I well, one we can't gamble. I don't have. I have to go to the book sports book, so I I can't do it up here in the state of Washington, which I think benefits them. But there is also, I think, the benefit some people do have is they have information, right? Yeah. Like they know teams or they know something that, you know, you get guys with algorithms now that are winning big money and then selling you the right to use their algorithm picks. Like it's just, it's blown I forget up. how many billions it is, but we're spending, we're spending so much money like on gambling and it's, it's, um, it's become an industry in, a, in and of its own in a big way. Everyone wants a piece too. ESPN wants a piece. Yeah, and we're still sponsored by Winstreak, so make sure you download the app. Winstreak. But that's not gambling. Gamble on that. <laughs> that's still money. All right, let's get out of here. Big Ben, K Win, check us out wherever you get your social media. That's Instagram, Twitter, X, excuse me, uh, Threads, and or TikTok. We're still up on TikTok. Check us out on Caffeine TV, YouTube. If you're an audio person, which I personally am, we come in good on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher. Google Podcast, wherever we're getting your you're getting your podcast. Uh, NBA Finals coming up, College World Series. Yeah. What else? NBA College draft softball. coming up. NBA. Oh God. Bronny oh, coming up. Bronny, where's he going? God, if Bronny wasn't around for this draft, would anyone even watch it? I don't no. think there'd be like all these. He said he is the biggest star of the draft, and he scored three points a game last year. Yeah, and he might go in the second round. <laughs> You should enter your name in. See I, what happens. Might as well. I got nothing to lose. We'll, we'll be a joint contract. If you take K Win, you got to take Big Ben. I love it. I love Bronny and James. All right. LeBron's so, doing. You take LeBron, you get me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They just have a little bit more firepower than me and you. I'll be your Bronny to you, LeBron. I think that's fair. <laughs> Boom. Boom.